all the Patreon members, all the subscribers, all the new viewers. I want to thank you guys for your support and your contributions made to the platform. It really means a lot to me. If you guys can do me a favor, check out the links in the description box below. If you want to join the Facebook page, if you want to join the Patreon page, links in the description box below. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Splash Wave Beats. I have either been traveling or living abroad for the last 15 years. Most of that time I've spent in Asia. I know a little bit about this topic. All right. Screen record news. Hopefully you're watching this on a mobile device. Protecting women from deceitful men or criminalizing breakups. A new law in India stirs debate. Article brought to you by CNN. Men who deceitfully break all promises of marriage after having sex with a woman could face up to 10 years in prison as Indian law grapples with a widespread but often ignored form of sexual abuse. So you still have women who want to have traditional relationships and marriages over in India. Okay. Over the years, even though I've made these videos private on my channel, I've talked about the, the decline in marriages and relationships and families in India. Uh, there's several videos on YouTube talking about this where uh, a journalist will stand in front of a camera and say, hey, these are the stats in India. Let's you know go out here on the streets and ask women, you know, why do you think uh, there's a decline in marriages? How come women don't want to get married or have kids? And they interview some women. They just said, hey, you know, we don't want to go through the same stress our mothers went through. We don't want to do all of that. We just, we don't need a man. We don't want a man, yada, yada, yada. Now, is that all women? No. But uh, those stats are very real. And it, it's it's a sharp enough decline where it was causing a concern over there in India. That's not to say it's happening with all women. Right? There's still some women that want traditional relationships and marriages. But here's the thing. Men are meeting women in India, talking to, this, talking to these women, wanting to pursue a relationship with these women. And these women, you know, they feel a connection. They like the guy. But then they say, hey, we cannot have sex until we get married. Or, okay, we can have sex, but you have to promise me we're going to get married. Now, somebody saying we could have sex, but you have to promise me we're going to get married. I'm pretty sure they're not saying that in week one, right? They're probably making the guy wait quite a while before she's convinced that he's going to, that he's really keeping his promise and he's really keeping his word about marrying this woman that they're in a relationship with. So according to this article, it seems like there's a lot of young sexless relationships in India, right? And, you know, opposites attract, the man and a the woman, there's sexual tension there. And, you know, people have sexual desires, sexual needs, right? And I really feel like most of these guys that are doing this, right? I'm just speaking from a man's mindset. We could pursue a woman. And if we see a woman, we like them. But if I feel like, you know, you want to be in a relationship with me, but you're um, sex is off the table until you're convinced that I'm serious about marrying you. It seems like, you know, that, that that's kind of a turnoff. And some guys will break up with a woman who feels, okay, you know, <laughs> if I'm going to be controlled sexually, and there's nothing wrong with women making this choice. I'm just saying how most guys think if if I'm going to be controlled sexually, sex is off the table. If you're using, if you're dangling sex in front of me like it's a carrot and I'm some rabbit or some hamster on a spinning wheel, running and running and running, doing everything I can to try to get this carrot, right? 
then after I get the carrot, I don't even want it anymore, right? If we would have waited till sex at a reasonable time, not the first week, you know, maybe within a couple of weeks or maybe after a month, we start casually having sex. Then it's like, okay, there's, there's an emotional bond. There's a sexual bond. And, you know, now we can, uh, I guess now we can play house, right? After this stage, after, after, I don't want to say goal. It's not a goal. After the gift of sex has been implemented within the relationship, then we can start saying, okay, can I live with this person and connect with this person sexually and see that, see myself connecting with this person sexually for decades to come, for a lifetime, right? Is there a bond? Right. Are we pairing together as one? You know, do is there a connection when we do have sex? Some people don't want to wait till, you know, marriage. And then once you're married and you have sex with this person, it's like, hey, I don't think we're sexually compatible. Right. That sucks. You you find out on your marriage night that you're not sexually compatible with this person. So. um a guy could really like somebody and see themselves with the, with that person for a long time and see it getting serious. But in, when that person says, oh, I'm not giving you any sex. It's almost like, well, if, if, you know, that's your choice, but if that's your attitude towards it, then it's like, I, I don't, I don't even want you anymore. Right. Some guys will say, I don't want you. I don't want to go through this. And some guys will say, well, yeah, you know, I, don't worry. They'll go along with it until when they actually get it, they don't even want to be with that person anymore. It's like a cat and a ball of yarn. You dangle a yarn, a ball of yarn in front of a cat. It's jumping, it's jumping, it's trying to grab that yarn. As soon as you throw the yarn at the cat, yeah, it'll mess around with it for a few seconds and then it'll leave it alone and run and be like, yeah, I'm... I'm <laughs> I, I I did all that straining. I did all that just to get that ball, ball of yarn. And once I got it, it's like, okay, that this, this ain't even really fun like that. I thought I wanted that, but I guess I don't. It was too much effort and, you know, too much effort for basic sex. You see what I'm saying? And all that tension building up. And then once you finally get it, you're like, yeah, you know. Whereas like if you had a healthy sexual relationship with your partner, then, you know, that, that's something you could space out. You don't have to have sex every single night. But some guys, you know, once you get it at a reasonable time, it's like, OK, you know, I like this person. I'm going to stay with them. But in this case, these guys are making promises. Saying, hey, yeah, yeah, I'll marry you. Then once they hit it three times, they give them the peace sign like that Uchi Wally song, right? Um, but the new law has also provoked questions about how it will be applied, whether it can effectively protect women from sexual exploitation and whether it risks criminalizing breakups. I think this is a terrible law to pass, right? Um, these laws are getting even more dangerous by the year. Every single year, they they put out this weird law acting like they're protecting women. And it's kind of like you're demonizing men. It's that whole bear. I, I feel more comfortable in a room with a bear than a man discussion. Right. Here you're you want to punish men for up to 10 years. For making a promise to marry somebody, and once they have sex, once they give in and have sex with this person, even though they haven't been married yet, they haven't gotten married yet, they ghost them. Do you know how many times men have had sex with women, and that man didn't hear that woman no more? Either either they weren't satisfied with their sexual encounter, or they were in a relationship and they were trying to get back at their ex-boyfriend, <clears throat> right? <clears throat> trying to one-up their boyfriend. <clears throat> or it's just like, hey, 
we had a good time. I'm a busy person. I don't want a relationship. I just needed some, I, I just needed my itch scratched that night. And so, you know, we bumped into each other and that's it. So women are allowed to do the same thing, you know, and, and, and <laughs> it, it's like, it's cool when they do it. They get mad when I do it. Right. So it's cool when women can do it. But men have to spend 10 years in prison if they do it. So how is this going to change the landscape in India? How is this going to change the dating market? So when a woman presents this to a man, either he has to oblige or it's like, hey, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to deal with this. And let's say all women, right? Let's say all women adopt this mindset. You know, it's it's going to be one extreme to another. Either I'm going to have to be sexually frustrated and suffer while I'm dealing with this person, or, you know, I'm just not going to deal with these women at all over here. So now you're going to have this huge MGTOW movement over in India. And what type of evidence, <clears throat> what type of evidence does a woman have to present to the court in order to show that, hey, you know, this person said he promised he was going to marry me and he had sex like a few times and then I never heard from him again. And the man, what if the man, oh, I never promised marriage to this woman. Ma'am, do you have any text messages proving this case? N no, but he said it verbally. They still going to lock him up? Is it her word against his? This is very dangerous. It's like there's, there's another law that was passed in Louisiana saying, um, you know, if, if, a if a man is, if, if, a, if a man has any sort of sexual encounter with, with a minor or takes advantage of a minor, right? In Louisiana, that they're going to castrate him. Right. But what about all these high school and middle school female teachers that are having relations with their students? Are they going to sew up and, and, and tie up their, you know, their vaginas? So you're going to castrate the men. Are you going to castrate the women? Are you going to sew their vaginas up and stitch it together so that they won't be able to use it? Right. So when you pose this question, about women who are doing the same thing. Now it's going too far, but it's okay to castrate men, lock men up. If you're not giving women what it is that they want. So I'm not going to give you what you want, but you got to give me what I want before I give you what you want. And it's like, you know, Prostitution from I've ne I've never been to India, so I don't want to put this on them. But if you look online on some of these escort websites, now I've never paid for sex, right? If you look online on some of these escort websites, like they they have it where you could browse by the country, and <laughs> the number of prostitutes that you see per country, the highest number I've seen was in India, right? So I don't. It seemed like that's the direction that men are going over there. If, if the number is that high over there, I know it's a large country, and I think it's the most populated country in the world. So it's, India, I think, has more people than China, right? If you're an Indian man living in India, if I was Indi an Indian man living in India, and I, you know, I, I made decent money or whatever. Man, look, all my, <laughs> if I had a chick, I'm like, okay, I, I would, I would, I would wait until marriage. She was putting that on me. I would wait till marriage, get married and use her as the baby maker. But to be honest, like I, I, I would have to pay for sex. Like if I need it, you know, and I'm, I'm constantly being controlled and, and told no, when it's like, I want to connect with my woman. See, both parties got to be on the same page in the West. Tell a woman, no, I don't want to have sex with you tonight. 
I mean, it, it, it's... <laughs> Fellas, y'all know what I'm talking about. You ever told a woman, no, I don't want to have sex tonight when she wants to have sex with you? And you're like, hey, man, nah, I don't, I don't want to do nothing tonight. Calm your little fast ass down and relax. You know, maybe next week or something. You tell a woman next week? I mean, she's going to cause war in that household, right? It's a war. She's going to war with you about why you're not having sex with her. Who is it? What are you doing in your spare time? Why, why are you just so drained? You don't have a period, right? It's, women have a problem with men when they say no. Nah, I can't have sex with you, baby. I'm just, nah, g- give me a few days to recharge. They don't even know what that means. You know what? I, I get me a younger man. What's wrong with you eating all the wrong food, all that salt and vinegar chips and your pineapple soda? Like, what, what you doing? You need to eat better, eat healthier. Come on, like, what, what's going on? Why your testosterone so low? You know, you get shamed. For not wanting to have sex with your lady, right? But when women don't want to have sex with you, all right, yes, you're supposed to respect that, right? But they don't get shame. These women are not getting shame for not wanting to have sex with the men that they want to be with. And they're saying, nah, you got to promise me marriage. If, if you promise me marriage, then I'll have sex with you. All right, then don't date this person. Don't date each other. But to lock them up for 10 years because after they have sex with you, they just left. Maybe they just don't like it. Maybe there's no sexual connection. Maybe it's like, hey, I, I saw something. I I, I, I I didn't like it. I don't want that no more. And now you want to lock them up for 10 years? It's a huge disadvantage to being a man worldwide all right i don't want to make this video too too long it goes on and on and on and on and on i'll leave a link in the description box below you guys take care peace